Hello and welcome to the Energy Connect studio at India Energy Week 2025. I'm delighted to have sitting next to me in the studio today, Anish Day, the Global Head of Energy, Natural Resources and Chemicals at KPMG. Anish, it's great to have you back with us at the Energy Connect studio. Uh, we met last year at uh, India Energy Week in Goa and since then it's been a year. So what's been the progress uh, of the industry in between? Well, thank you for having me back. It's great to be back here. So the progress of the industry in between, I think, is, is, um, is there are several dimensions on which the progress has happened. I think at one level, we are recognizing that provision of energy and affordability of energy are very important paradigms and that all forms of energy need to coexist to meet those requirements while being as sustainable as possible. Uh, the conversation is much more balanced around that. The second thing is that uh, there was always a, there was some kind of a thought process that renewables can do it all, okay? And I think given that that correction has happened, we are seeing nuclear coming back on a much bigger scale in the conversations, including in India, but across the world. So those are two things which are big on the supply side. On the demand side, there has been, um, I mean, the trends have more or less continued. But we need to see how it goes forward because, you know, what we also had in the end of 2024 and the early 2025 is a big shift in the political dimensions of energy uh, with, uh, with the withdrawal of the U.S. from the Paris Accord and generally, in, in general, a pushback uh, towards, uh, you know, green at any cost. So I think that, that, has, that has been a big change. So it's a bit of a re-indexing which is happening at this IEW, which is the first major event on the energy space at the start of 2025. Absolutely. And like you said, that it's, I think, the, the increasing realization that one source cannot do it all. So how can the industry become more efficient, reliable and, and sustainable and carry along all these systems? So first thing is that um, we have to amp up energy efficiency. Uh, we are doing well, but we are pretty much at half of uh, what we need to do to reach the 2030 goals which were set out at COP28, COP29. Okay, so there is a lot more to do. And this is where we have help uh, because, uh, you know, the AI revolution which we are seeing all around us is actually capable of enabling energy efficiency. Um, extend that to broader decarbonization. AI can actually help in the broader decarbonization efforts as well in the hard to abate sector. So I think that's where uh, we need the amping up of uh, using technology to bring the efficiency in. But that can also extend to the supply side. So you can put up clean projects or any kind of projects much more efficiently than before. And that will help both the timing aspects as well as the cost aspects. With SMRs coming, we are looking at modularization of everything uh, which is happening, which brings a great deal of efficiencies and standardizations and lowering of costs. So I think, uh, if I had to just take a step back, I think we are much more mature in terms of the possibilities of AI, in terms of the choices of technology which we are talking about, and um, recognizing that there are challenges we, which we need to meet frontally. One other thing I might mention is that uh, the, there was a methane pledge which was made at COP uh, and it was in the air at that point of time. Today also in the IEW, we spoke about it in more concrete terms about what needs to be done. And that conversation is getting a little more mature. So I think in general, the maturity of the conversation is quite encouraging. Well, circling back to your comment about uh, AI and here at India Energy Week, uh, KPMG is, is, uh, has taken a lead in the initiative uh, to incorporate AI uh, to make the energy sector more efficient. So can you share more uh, on that? Yes, so this week uh, at the India Energy Week, uh, we announced our partnership with Microsoft on advanced energy frameworks through AI. So this we have been working on a while together and now we are sufficiently confident that this is something which we can really bring on to bear uh, to for our clients and for the industry in general. Uh, so for all the kinds of applications which I mentioned, you know, you know enhancing supply, cutting down process delays, 
uh, enabling people. So all of those forecasting, all of those solutions which we are working together on you know, research which has been done by Microsoft but now being taken to the market by KPMG building solutions on top of that research and the frameworks which they have developed. In fact, interestingly, I proposed to Minister Puri yesterday that he consider uh, putting a, a mission or a task force at the energy level uh, for energy, uh, the energy sector for accelerating AI in, uh, in India in particular. And uh, he, he promptly agreed and he said that we'll start with his ministry, which actually has a big remit. Okay, it has, uh, you know, upstream oil, downstream oil, natural gas, biofuels, ethanol, all of that, uh, you know, including in biofuels, compressed biogas. So all of that is a big remit, which can be really enabled through AI. And, and he's already directed his officials to start on that process. And he also committed that once this lands in the hydrocarbon sector or the sectors in his remit, he looked to expand that in the other parts of energy. That's great to hear. And uh, as the global head of uh, energy, uh, natural resources and chemicals, you have a, like a macro view of uh, what's happening in the industry. So when we generally talk about whether it's the deployment of AI or the advancement of technology, uh, how much do you think is a question of capability and uh, what percentage of it is about culture? So, uh, the capabilities have developed much more quickly uh, than before. Uh, AI was uh, there for a long time, but generative AI has given it new legs, right? So, it has put AI on steroids. Uh, AI also doesn't act in isolation. It works with other technologies like digital twins, IoT, you know, your scatter systems to create that real impact on the ground. Till then, now it was discrete systems. AI is actually playing that role of an integrator and accelerator. But it's also a culture shift, as you say. So we are going to see that culture shift over the next few years, but it's going to be a learning curve. We have been working with the industry at the senior most levels, you know, chairman of corporations, and they have been guiding us to say that it is a big culture transformation. So don't see AI in pieces. Paint the whole picture for us, and then we'll pick the pieces on where we think it's the most relevant for our organization. So I think architecting AI right, getting the transition process right into AI, making that culture shift are very important considerations. And uh, you just spoke about generative uh, making a big shift. And now generative is uh, making way for agentic, and, and that transformation continues. Uh, what's your uh, outlook on that? So agentic is not independent of generative AI, right? It's a build on uh, generative AI. AI, we have to get the confidence that we can have unsupervised agentic uh, orchestration, uh, which is technically possible, but practically, if you don't have good data, if you don't have good processes, it might lead to wrong outcomes. So I think we need to be a little, I wouldn't say cautious, but I think we are a little more measured on implementation of agentic AI in its full pomp and glory. But the process has already started. That's a trend and it will come. It's a question of how we graduate it, what kind of complexity of use cases or functions uh, which we are talking about, what are the security implications, what are the criticality implications, where do you need the checks and balances. I think the whole governance framework will have to evolve and we are working on that as well. And I think one uh, question that always gets asked is uh, with, with the deployment of AI, uh, conversely, energy demand is also going to grow. Yes. So how do you see the industry managing that going forward? So a couple of interesting things. One is that DeepSeek has come and showed us that possibly it doesn't need to be as energy intensive as it uh, could have otherwise been. But having said that, it will still be energy intensive. It will still be computer intensive. And the moment it becomes actually less energy intensive, the applications of AI will increase. So net-net, there will be a big demand on energy. So I think we have to prepare for that world, which is why the nuclear question has actually become even more relevant because you need large, dependable power uh, for, for that. And, you know, renewables will struggle for that too in its entirety. So you need to complement that with other sources. But I also think, and this is what we are doing, is making project development, any kind of project development, efficient using AI. So the demand for AI is not coming for the energy sector, but the energy sector has to serve that demand 
and it can serve it much more efficiently using modern AI. That's an excellent point, Anish. And finally, we are here at uh, India Energy Week, where you're a key part of, of the proceedings. And you have seen this uh, uh, event uh, grow over the past couple of years. What's your takeaway this year? So I think now it's become an acceptable, ac accepted event. It's become a reference event. And it's one of the few events which happen at this scale in demand countries. You know, the energy sector has been driven by supply side uh, events. You know, it's be it Adipeg, be it Saravik, be it others. They are the energy producing hub. This is the one event which is happening at this scale and, and so diverse event at a consumption hub. And as we all know, this is only going to accentuate. India is going to be the OPEC uh, forecast very clearly say that India is going to be the most of the demand, you know, a big part of the demand, almost like 30% of the energy demand for the coming uh, decades till 2050. So if that is the case, then you needed a platform like this, but it's taken, uh, it, it still talks, requires bold steps. It's a, it's a massive event, right? And I'm so glad that government of India, led by Minister Puri, uh, has have, has taken that initiative. And today you can see the buzz around the place. You know, everybody is there. In fact, it's amazing uh, level of senior level participation and the quality of the conversations has been amazing. So I'm very happy that it is, it's, it's come to age and I'm hoping that next year will be even better. Anish, it's always such a pleasure to talk to you and thank you very much once again for coming down to the studio. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for watching and you can get more comprehensive coverage of the energy industry and studio interviews like this at energyconnects.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media and I'll be back with more studio interviews from India Energy Week. Until then, goodbye.